Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see you all here this morning, and uh, we trust the Lord will bless us as we meet together here in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Uh, we gather in his name and for our carol service uh, this morning. So uh, we trust we'll have a, a good time of praise and uh, uh, worship and a focus on those Christmas themes that we, we come to uh, this season. So there are a few announcements, so I'll just uh, go through those. Just to say, midweek has stopped because of the approach to Christmas, so we'll be uh, recommencing midweek then in the new year in January. Um, BB, the Anchor Boys, will meet um, this Monday, tomorrow, um, uh, 20th of December, from 7 to 8 p.m., the Anchor Boys. Uh, and then that's the end of the, the BB for the season, or for before Christmas then. Um, also, just to say, the BB needs helpers, so if you have any uh, desire to help out or you want to help that work, just let Ian Porter know uh, about that. Uh, GB have sent out uh, registration forms, and they had a drive-through at Drumgullen Church Hall on the Friday the 10th there of December. So um, they hope to begin their full programme in the new year. And if anyone knows girls of... Um, three years and upwards who would like to join the company, just let the captain, uh, Lynette Kernahan, uh, know about that. Um, also, I'm hoping to do communion classes in the new year, and if you, uh, I have a few names already, but if, if anybody is interested in that, uh, wants to explore that, uh, please just uh, contact me uh, about that. Then, uh, just to mention, um, just sorry, going through, um, some of these are calculatory announcements and some are, yes, um, our, our, yes, just our Christmas arrangements then, um, with some, uh, you know, contact with our, all the, the elders in the, um, the uh, two congregations through WhatsApp or um, through phone calls. So, um, just to say that uh, this year Christmas is on a Saturday. So, what we intend to do with the current COVID situation still ongoing is um, we intend to have our Christmas Day service online. So, we'll have that uploaded. Uh, like similar to what we did last year, and we'll have it uploaded hopefully um, for 10.30 on Christmas uh, morning. And then we'll have our Lord's Day service, which is on Boxing Day. So uh, we're going to have a joint service here in Drumgulland for that uh, at 11 o'clock. Um, so, uh, so it'll be Kilka Murray and you know, will be joining us here in Drumgulland for our Lord's Day service, which is on Boxing Day. Then just to say, wider world, uh, let just contact Diane Galt uh, to confirm if you want to, wish to continue to be a subscriber to the Wider World magazine. Um, subscription is six pounds, and if you could pass monies on to Diane uh, as soon as you can. Uh, numbers of magazines required for the incoming year have to be with uh, the PW headquarters by the 31st of December. So just to say that. Um, and for the moment, with the ongoing COVID situation, we continue to have you know, res certain restrictions uh, with, with masks and that. But if you really feel uncomfortable with your mask, you know, do, do take it off. Um, we're not asking you to uh, you know, feel uncomfortable during the service, but we, we continue these practices, obviously, for the present time. <coughs> I want to begin by reading a psalm, and it's Psalm 103 and verses 1 to 6. So this is a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. And that is what the meaning of of Christmas is that the, the Lord Jesus was sent forth by God. He sent forth his son um, so that we could have forgiveness um, and we could have healing and new life. So, uh, and that's really the central meaning uh, of this season. So we're going to worship and we're going to sing together our first item of praise, which is 326, uh, Love Came Down at Christmas.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Lord our God, we gather here uh, this morning to do one thing, and that is to worship you, to focus our hearts and our minds upon you, the living and mighty God, who is the God of our salvation, and who in the fullness of time has sent forth to us the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we gather here this morning, uh, Lord our God, for our carol service, we pray that you would help us in our worship, that by your Spirit, Heavenly Father, you would enable us to glorify Christ and to uh, honor and glorify you, our Savior God. And Lord Jesus, we give you all praise and all honor and glory uh, this morning as we gather in your presence and in your name. Uh, You are the King of glory, uh, and yet you took upon yourself our flesh, Lord Jesus, and you were born into this world as one of us in order to redeem us by your life uh, of perfect righteousness, uh, by your atoning death on the cross for our sins. And so this morning we praise and we worship you, Lord Jesus, as the risen Lord and Savior who is ascended on high and who is the King of kings and who is the Lord of lords. And Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for forgiveness for all of our transgressions and sins. We confess, Lord God, that we are not as enthused as we ought to be about the good news of our Savior Jesus. We confess, uh, Heavenly Father, that we so often stray far from you in our hearts and in our lives, and we fail to look to you and to honor your Son, our Savior, as we ought to. So forgive us, Heavenly Father. Forgive us for all of our sins and enable us by your Spirit to turn to Jesus, to look to Christ day by day. And be with us for the remainder of our service of worship, uh, our carol service this morning. And we pray all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we have a a number of readings this morning. And our first Bible reading is from Genesis chapter 3 and verses 8 to 15. And it's uh, read to us by Sandra. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between her offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labour you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Amen. Thanks to Sandra for uh, doing that reading for us. Now we have, uh, in these COVID days, we don't have the choir, you know, singing as we normally would in these uh, situations, but um, the choir have uh, recorded uh, a couple of of anthems, um, and um, we come now to our first recorded choir anthem uh, video, um, which is Tell Us About a Baby. So...
Very good, very good, excellent. Thanks to the choir for that and, uh, and the production, for, to Alan for producing that and even the camera switches there, it was great. So thank you so much. Uh, we're going to sing, we're going to stand and sing now together as a congregation and we're going to sing 336, the first Noel. So we'll worship the Lord together. We have our next uh, scripture reading then, and um, it's from Micah chapter 5 and verses 2 to 4, and it's read to us by Janet. Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labour bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. 
Thanks to, to Janet for, for doing that reading for us. We're going to stand and sing again, and we're going to sing uh, another great Christmas carol, um, 331, Once in Royal David's City. Let's spar our heads in prayer again. Let us pray. Living and mighty God, we give thanks to you for this opportunity just to be here this morning, just to think about the great truth of the incarnation, that Lord Jesus, you who are the Lord of glory, eternal God, the word of God, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that even though you are the King of glory, you took those downward steps and took upon yourself our flesh and became one of us in order that through your life, your death on the cross for our sins, your resurrection, we have redemption. You came to redeem us. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have loved us in Christ, that you have sent to us your only begotten Son, 
so that all who believe in him are forgiven and have eternal life and are saved from the judgment and the wrath to come. And we pray, Lord our God, that you would enable all gathered here to turn at this time to Christ, to know the joy of salvation and the blessing of new life through faith in Jesus. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those for whom Christmas the period is a, is a difficult time, for those who are lonely, for those who grieve, for those who are struggling to cope in life. We pray, Heavenly Father, that they would find joy through you and through faith in Jesus and, and your comfort at this time and your blessing. We pray, Heavenly Father, for our, the ongoing situation in regard to COVID. And we pray, Lord our God, that as we enter into a new year, that in your mercy you would enable us to return to a semblance of normality again and give to our doctors, our nurses, our health service, our politicians wisdom to make good and beneficial decisions. And we pray, Lord our God, for our congregations of Drumgulland and Kilkenamurray at this time. We pray, Lord God, that you would bring to us unity in Christ and a hunger and desire among us to grow in the knowledge and love of Jesus. And we pray, Lord our God, that through your word and by your Holy Spirit, you would build your kingdom among us. We pray, Lord, for all of those who have been unwell and are unwell among us, those known to us, um, for those who have been in hospital, those um, who are maybe in hospital at this time, those who have had operations or received treatment or are receiving treatment, and all of those who have ongoing health issues. We pray, Lord God, that you would put your hand of healing and blessing upon them and that you would be with their families and encourage and strengthen them at this time. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would enable us, each one of us, uh, to reach out um, at this Christmas time uh, to, to others around us, to show the love of Christ, and to keep our focus, Heavenly Father, on the Lord Jesus uh, and his coming to us, which is the true meaning of Christmas, that we may glorify Christ in our hearts and put him first uh, above and before all other, other things. And so, Heavenly Father, we do ask and pray all of these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So our next Bible reading is uh, read to us by Evelyn, and it's Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was to be barren in her sixth month is in her sixth month. Nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Amen. Thanks to Alan for doing that reading for us. Oh, um, Hannah is going to come and sing a solo for us.
Thanks to Hannah for that beautiful singing. Thank you, Hannah. So uh, we uh, come now to our uh, final reading, um, which is uh, from Luke chapter 2, and verses 1 to 7, uh, the birth uh, of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius uh, was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each uh, to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Amen and may the Lord God bless this reading and all of our readings uh, this morning to our hearts and minds. Now we're going to have another choir anthem piece, recorded piece, um, which uh, is Christmas Grace. So.
Wonderful thanks to the choir for that and again to Alan for, for doing the recording and uh, great, great quality production. Thank you so much. So I just want to reflect for a moment or two on the Bible passage that, uh, that was read to us by Evelyn, a uh, well-known passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 1 and verses 26 uh, through to 37. An announcement is something that um, can take us by surprise, um, and that can be a pleasant surprise or it can be perhaps an unpleasant surprise depending on the announcement. But announcements are something that demand a reaction. Um, and the account that we just read from Luke's gospel of the angel's announcement to Mary uh, that she uh, will um, conceive and give birth to a child who will be called the Son of God is an announcement that understandably astonished Mary, uh, both uh, in its form and in, in its content. Uh, and we, we see that in the text. Um, we are, are told um, in verse uh, 29, actually, um, that um, the appearance uh, and, and greeting of this angelic messenger, uh, the angel uh, Gabriel, you know, astonished Mary, and she is obviously astounded at what's happening to her. Uh, we're told that Mary was greatly troubled at his words. Um, uh, and we're, we're also, we also see from the account then that she is also perplexed uh, at what is being told to her. She is told in verse 31 that she will be with child. Literally, you will conceive in the womb. And the angel goes on to tell uh, Mary that the son that she will bear will be called the son of the Most High. Uh, and this is all together an astonishing revelation. And clearly... Mary understands this as something that will happen to her imminently in the immediate future and exclusively it will involve only her. And so she is perplexed and she says in verse 34, how will this be since I am a virgin? Or, or literally, how will this be since I do not know a man? She understands that what is being announced to her is outside natural human experience. And Mary's pointing out to the angel the impossibility, humanly speaking, of what is being announced gives the angel Gabriel then an opportunity to point Mary and us to the miraculous, to the astounding glory and power of what God is about to do. And it's that that I want to focus on for a few moments uh, this morning. After all, this announcement to Mary is the greatest announcement in human history. And the greatest act of God in human history. And while Mary is surprised and perplexed, what is announced to her is for us the happiest of all announcements. Of course, we know that the Lord has always intervened in human history at various points. Both in the life of his people generally and um, specifically in the lives of his, his people in particular. The, those servants whom he chooses for special tasks or roles. We see that in, in Mary's cousin Elizabeth who is mentioned in this text. Who is already expecting a child in her old age. And who that child will be, of course, John the Baptist. She and her husband, Zechariah, have been granted an unexpected blessing. Faithful Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah, have been given by God the unexpected and extraordinary blessing of conceiving in their old age. And that has happened through the gracious and extraordinary intervention of God, similar to the way in which the Lord, through divine intervention, enables Sarah and Abraham to have a son, Isaac, in their old age. God's intervention in the lives of his people brings about that which is unexpected. And that's something that we should 
ourselves expect of God, that he intervenes in unexpected ways. God intervenes in the life of the church and in the lives of his people. That includes our own lives, individual lives, in ways that we do not expect. And so Mary's cousin Elizabeth has received extraordinary news and is now six months pregnant. But Mary's conception is beyond even the extraordinary. The miraculous conception by the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary is something that is beyond all human expectation, experience, and understanding. And yet, in verse 35, the angel still provides a reply to Mary's question, how will this be? And I, I don't feel adequate, folks, to, 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 to even talk about this. Um, I, this is an event that I stand in absolute awe of, that God became flesh and dwelt among us. And I, I don't have the ability in my mind to, to properly explain this or to, to speak on it even. How can a frail, foolish, stupid little man like me address what Luke is saying in this passage. But it's here and we'll have a look at it because God has placed it in his word and we need to to think on these truths. The angel describes the event in the following way. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And there's a kind of twin description there. The language that is used here, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, is reminiscent of the language used of the Holy Spirit in creation. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, we're told that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And so in Genesis 1 and verse 2, we're we're told that the Spirit of God hovers over the formless, shapeless abyss, poised and ready to bring life as we know it into existence. And so from Scripture, we see that the Holy Spirit is the agent of creation who created life and the world around us, who sustains life and is the giver of life. And so now He, the Holy Spirit, will descend upon the Virgin Mary in creative power to produce this unique human being who is God incarnate. God made flesh. The Holy Spirit will prepare for the eternal Son of God a human form in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Secondly, Mary is told, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That's a further way of describing what has just been said. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. But it adds another layer of explanation. The word overshadowed is used elsewhere in Scripture to to describe God's presence. So we are given a sense here of the presence of God being upon Mary. So for example, Exodus chapter 40 and verses 34 to 35, the same word is used in the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament to describe how the Shekinah glory of God comes down and rests upon or settles upon the tabernacle. It's also a word that's used later on in Luke's gospel to describe how the cloud of God's presence overshadowed the disciples. When Jesus was transfigured on the mountain. And so that term overshadowed speaks of God's glorious presence. In this case, God's presence and power to bring about this miraculous event. But that word then overshadowed, the power of the Most High will overshadow you, points us to the truth that through this powerful act of God, Christ being miraculously conceived in Mary's womb results in God becoming present with us. Christ is God dwelling, tabernacling among us. As John says at the beginning 
of his gospel and the word became flesh and literally tabernacled, dwelt or tabernacled among us. And the results then of this miraculous conception of Christ by the Holy Spirit in the womb of the Virgin Mary is that, as the angel puts it, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And we see that firstly in, in, in this statement that the angel, first of all, that the angel calls him the Holy One. In Scripture, for something or someone to be holy means that they are consecrated or set apart to God. But holy can also mean even more than that. It can, can mean, have the sense of, of, of perfect and pure. So, for example, Romans chapter 7, verse 12, the Apostle Paul speaks of God's law as being holy, meaning that it is perfect. And it is in that sense that Christ, who is conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary, is described by the angel as the Holy One. In other words, he will be without sin, perfect and pure. He is like us in every way, taking upon himself our flesh, and yet without sin. Secondly, he will be called the Son of God. He will have and be recognized as having a unique relationship to God the Father. Just as he came from God, so he reveals God to us and is through his life, death on the cross for our sins and resurrection, the one through whom we come to God. As Jesus himself goes on to say in Luke chapter 10 and verse 22, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows who the Son is except the Father or who the Father is except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Christ who came from God is alone the way of salvation and the way to God the Father. And we see here then that Mary responds in faith to this incredible announcement from the angel. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Just as the Holy Spirit will be at work in Mary's womb to produce within Mary he who is God made flesh, so the Holy Spirit is already at work in Mary's heart to bring about this response of faith whereby she believes and submits to the word of God. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit is at work today through the message of the gospel to convict us of our sin and bring us in saving faith to Christ. And the gospel, the good news is that as Paul tells us in Romans chapter 4, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. He sent forth the eternal son of God who is the king of glory to be born of a woman, born as one of us, to live for us, to die for our sins and be raised from the dead so that all who believe in him receive forgiveness and right standing with God and eternal life. So to resist the gospel is to resist the Spirit of God who gave us Christ. Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Know him as your Savior and Lord and King. And rejoice in the salvation that he provides for you. Come to the one who is God made flesh to redeem you. And put your trust in him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. And we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be here at this carol service. And we gather here with one, one purpose, and that is to glorify you and to honor you. I pray that each one here, Father, would bow and submit before Christ as their Savior and Lord. And I ask it in Jesus' name.
Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn then, um, which is uh, another great carol, um, three to eight, O Come All You Faithful. Just before we come to the benediction, could I just uh, say a word of thanks just to the choir, David and the choir, and to Alan for doing those pieces for us, for all of our readers, uh, for Hannah for her beautiful singing, uh, and thank you for all for, for coming here to our carol service this morning. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.